Here we go again. Let's try. <laughs> Let's see this time. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, we're here to talk about Kamsi, how not to demolish it, but to reuse it instead, how to improve the density of Sydney's southwestern suburbs while preserving their qualities, a project we developed between the Schools of Architecture at the University of Sydney and UTS with the uh, incredible support of the Alan Stein Swine Foundation. But first, a little bit about us. My name is Guillermo Fernández Abascal. I'm an architect, a practice fellow at the University of Sydney, and partner at GFA2 and GFA. And the project is a collaboration with Urzi Grau, academic at UTS, and partner at Fake Industries and GFA, our SER practice. Come see, 11 kilometers southwest of Sydney CBD, and one of the New South Wales government strategic growth hubs. It is part of Sydenham to Bankstown Urban Renewal Corridor that will receive in the next 20 years 35,400 new homes and 8,700 new jobs. Hundreds of generic red bricks apartments buildings define Kamsi. Developed in the 1960s and 1970s, they are close to reaching the own of their functional lives. Following exclusively financial logics, their demolition and replacement seems imminent. Imagine an alternative that, that repurposes instead of demolishes. An alternative that saves millions of dollars to homeowners and developers. An alternative that reinvigorates the neighborhood socially, ecologically, and economically. An alternative that reduces dramatically Kamsi's uh, footprint. Imagine a project that challenges the accepted idea that suburban densification can only be achieved through top-down rezoning and new master plans at the scale of the neighborhood. <laughs> the project will preserve what exists. It will extend the building's functional life through repair and maintenance. It will increase each apartment usable area. It will change and challenge legal and financial models, and most importantly, it will be tailored to the community's needs. This bottom-up strategy will engage homeowners and protect the qualities that the neighborhood is known for. Its friendly scale, its multicultural and intergenerational population, and its rich natural habitat, including the Cooks River ecosystem. How? Instead of looking at isolated red brick apartment buildings, we group them in four. In this way, we reach a scale of intervention halfway between a single block and the master plan that provides a mix of housing sizes that are sweet, sweet to the neighborhood's needs. These clusters of buildings offer a medium density alternative to Sydney's southwestern suburbs. These alternatives imagines the well-known red brick housing blocks. The urban strategy is straightforward. Eliminate the fences between four red brick apartment buildings and then join them together with a shared timber structure. The new pavilion will house the building collective life while in the underne underneath will host a half-sunken car park. Washing, exercising, reading, gardening, hobbying, cooking, and even daydreaming. These are the kinds of common activities that will occupy the amenities pavilion. The architectural strategy follows. A new light steel structure shared between two blocks improves the circulation. Remember, there are 1960s buildings. Balconies and winter gardens are add open air spaces to the building's main facades. Two new homes on top of each apartment building combine generous living spaces and sustainable materials, increasing the neighborhood's density while making the refurbishment of the four buildings financially viable. Summing up in five easy steps. A timber pavilion joins four red brick buildings. 
It's a common infrastructure for the building's collective life and includes parking, laundry rooms, gyms, greenhouses, and whatever you can imagine. It liberates the streets from parking, increasing the neighborhood's public spaces and greater spaces. Two, two new circulation cores build the building up to code. They ensure that all the homes are accessible. And by doing so, they preserve campus' diverse and intergenerational demographics. Third, the improvements on the block's thermal envelopment decrease campus' overall carbon footprint. The refurbishment provides a variety of climate, climatic spaces for each of the apartments, such as winter, winter gardens, verandas, greenhouse, cozy rooms, and rooftop gardens. Four, New terraces, balconies, and ports fulfill the SEP 65 requirements for outdoor space. They also take advantage of Sydney's mild climate, covering Campsie's red brick street escape with new pot plants and vertical gardens to reduce the heat island effect. And fifth, two new apartments on each red brick building rooftop ensure the viability of the renovation. They densify the neighborhood, yet barely altered Campsie friendly scale they're almost invisible. Camsey 2194 imagines how Camsey's 350 red brick housing blocks could, ac could accommodate more than 700 new homes. But the project is also a model that can eventually transform and preserve neighboring suburbs like Belmore, Pantswell, Elwood, and eventually Sydney's Southwest. Thank, Thank you very much. Well, that was my first Petra Kutcher. I think it was probably uh, same for many in the room. That was absolutely fantastic. It gives me such hope, um, and it certainly gives us hope at the committee. So in, in, one quick, in quick succession, we had a network of green active transport corridors, alternative uses of curbside space, sustainable, fun and equitable swim sites, and having grown up not too far um, from some of those suburbs, I'm so excited about the amazing opportunities to reuse um, and, and reinvigorate uh, Campsie in, in, this, um, in this example, but the wider opportunity for some of those fantastic suburbs of Sydney. So thank you to all of our fabulous presenters. Uh, so far this morning, there's been some great ideas. Uh, and what we do know at the committee um, is that we've got some of the right, a lot of the right people in the room today to help make those ideas happen. 